Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Tonight, something very exciting. I'm going to take you back to 1930 and the Smoot-Hawley Act. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Is it Sweeps Week again? Yes, yes. We could go with hot chicks and bikinis. Nope, we're going to talk Smoot-Hawley. At the time in 1930, it seemed insignificant. It was just to protect trade. I mean, who could possibly be against that? It raised tariffs on imported goods to record levels. The problem? It caused the rest of the world to retaliate and put tariffs on all of their stuff shipping over here. Trading suffered and everything kind of spun out of control. Then the economy suffered. Uh, unemployment went through from 7.8 when the Smoot-Hawley tariff passed to 16.3. I want to show you a chart. This is the Great Depression. This is the beginning of it. Here's the crash of 1929 coming here. And here's Smoot Holly. And you'll notice that after this pass, what happened? The market just started steadily, gradually going down. Severe decline in the, uh, in the market that lasted uh, more than a year. Now, we're talking about doing the same thing again. The House just passed a bill that would increase tariffs on China. What would you possibly be doing? By the way, they've retaliated by now putting tariffs on chicken. Oh, if we could just learn from the past. Now I want to show you something that we found in the Wall Street Journal today, and I've talked to you before about we're repeating all of the same mistakes of the 1930s. This is fast forwarding now to 1936, and here it is, May of 1937. All right. Things started to come up, I guess, a bit, the Dow Jones. But what happened from here? Where this ends is about where FDR was trying to pack all the courts, and it passed. He was upset that his New Deal centerpieces, like the Agricultural Adjustment Act, where he was actually burning crops, destroying crops, and killing thousands of pigs, because he said, hey, if there's a shortage, then the prices will go up. Yeah. Also, the NRA, you remember, Watch for the Blue Eagle, the Price Control Agency, it was shot down by the courts. The court system said it's unconstitutional. So his solution was not to do things differently. He just decided, I'm going to change the court. He wanted to stack the courts in his favor. FDR's court packing plan was shot down, thank goodness, by 70-20 vote. Even the Democrats were jumping ship from him at this point. Businesses were left in limbo. They didn't know what was going on. Now the whole government was starting to be in chaos, and everything was being thrown at them. They didn't know what would come next. The Wall Street Journal describes this climate at this time as massive hikes in personal and corporate tax rates, severe monetary tightening, and aggressive business bashing. They were also being regulated up to their eyeballs at this time. So what did businesses do? They just sat on their money. They sat tight. They held on because they just wanted this nightmare to end in the government. Well, what happened? Let's go back to that chart. What happened? This all starts to happen. The courts pass and say, no, it's all unconstitutional. And he starts to pack the court or go that direction, spooks businesses, and what happens? Here it is. Look at that drop. The uncertainty, the hostile business climate, it all led to a depression within a depression. That's why in this country it's known as the Great Depression, but it's not known that way anywhere else. Does that not sound exactly the same today? Hikes in tax rates, monetary tightening, aggressive business bashing, uncertainty. I mean, how much is healthcare going to cost businesses? How much, are, how much are small businesses going to be taxed next year? How much will new regulation, will they, will they be subject to? What is Cass Sunstein doing on the weekends? Nobody's going to invest their money until they know the answers to these questions. And that's what's happening in America right now. Now, I've told you before, we are repeating the mistakes of the 1930s, okay? Here's the 1930 uh, crash. Could you, could you overlay, please, our course? This is the exact course that we've been on now. Look at this. I told you that we are repeating history. Will the expiration of the Bush tax cuts be the final straw? Wait, may I? May I just start calling it what it really is? It's not the Bush tax cut. We are talking about what could shove us off the cliff along with all the other uncertainty we are talking about not bush tax cuts that was ten years ago we're now talking about one of the largest tax hikes in american history the obama tax hike wall street journal says 
it may be now the nightmare. The nightmare that shoves us off the edge. Now, revisionist progressives will say the depression within a depression happened because FDR just didn't spend enough. His best friend, one of the guys who actually helped design the New Deal, he was the head of the Treasury, he testified in front of Congress, that was insanity. It's the same flawed logic that we're hearing today. All you have to do is look at history and learn from it. I have been telling you that the seasons are about to change. You have to wake your friends up, tell them about the mistakes of our past before we repeat them. Hello, America. I'm glad you're here. I want you to know, first of all, everything that I say on this program, please do not take my word for it. Please look it up yourself. Look up all of this stuff, but, but please try to go to the original sources. The progressives have controlled the history books for so long. Read their own words. Read their own diaries. There's plenty of books that the people in the, uh, uh, the Wilson or the, uh, the um, Roosevelt administration wrote themselves. They'll tell you. They'll tell you exactly what happened. I've said to you, must be hundreds of times now. I hope all of this stuff is wrong. I do. Um, if it's right, you know, things aren't good for me either. I have nothing to gain here. And really, quite honestly, I think I have more to lose because if, I, if I'm wrong, I'll be so wildly discredited, nobody will listen to me. We'll just have to see what happens on the other side. I have nothing to gain and I have everything to lose. I can't say I have everything, I have nothing to gain. I do. I, I have a country to pass on to my children if I'm right. My batting average is pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. What, when I say things, trouble is coming, it's not just me. It's the Wall Street Journal. I just showed you the chart that shows, you know, how the Dow is mirroring the 1930s. I mean, I could quote to you chapter and verse how we're doing exactly the same thing that Wilson did that led to nightmares and also FDR which made it the Great Depression here but it's it's also things like the Hindenburg Omen we talked about it on this program and I know it was talked about on CNBC and other business uh, networks like Fox Business Channel it's kind of a complex financial thing but five things have to happen for it to trigger and when it does there's a 77 percent chance of a crash within the next 30 days well, we've just entered the 30-day period. By the way, the Hindenburg Orb Omen has happened twice. Now, have you done anything since we told you that story? Have you changed your lifestyle? Have you, have you done anything? I can tell you this, the global governments, the George Soroses of the world, I just read a story yesterday that billionaires are buying, buying gold by the ton, I think it said. I mean, an actual ton. They've prepared. Have you ever heard the old saying, the rich get richer? Well, why is that? Well, because they have access to information that you don't have and because they prepare. Well, there's no excuse for you saying you didn't have access to that information anymore. It's available. It's available everywhere. And it's why I tell you, please don't take my word for it. Please. You have to know these things to be true yourself. I don't want you ever to be in an argument and saying, well, I, 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 I well, Glenn Beck said, you know it yourself. Look it up. Do your own homework. The rich know because they have access to the information. They know history. They know the warning signs. And in many ways, some of them are controlling and manipulating it. George Soros comes to mind. I'll show you at the bottom of the hour. What's coming is going to require all of us to be prepared and require action from each of us. And I don't mean like, we've got to get out in the streets. I mean, you've got to vote. You gotta educate yourself, but you also have to prepare to be a help for others. That's why I've been telling you to do the 40 day and 40 night challenge. We have to be the best we can be for the country to survive in hard times. Again, I hope I'm wrong. Good Americans don't panic. Good Americans roll up their sleeves. Americans that are unprepared and want to live in this la-la land where, hey, don't worry, it's not gonna be so bad, and if it is, somebody will save me. Well, you're in for a real surprise. Uh, let me just warn you on this. If the things I say are true, they are going to be telling you to go exactly to the wrong place. 
you don't go where the government tells you to go because that's usually where all hell breaks loose. I mean, wherever that is, it'll be as safe as, uh, well, I don't know, the Superdome. Remember how safe that was? There were those who prepared and those who got out, those who couldn't get out and were trapped, and then there were those who said, ah, oh, well, somebody will save me. I refuse to be the American on my roof. Please make that commitment to me, to yourself, to your children. Be somebody who goes, gets a boat, and helps other people. Not somebody on the roof making a sign that says, help us. Because usually the ones who come to help are from the government. And they're not really to help. They're there to help themselves, usually. I want to show you something. They say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Well, I'm so flattered at what the White House is doing now. They aren't using a chalkboard. This is a totally different idea. This is a whiteboard. And they're using it to make their point here um, on the Bush tax cuts. Okay, this is Austin Goolby. He's the president's uh, chair on the Council of Economic Advisors. Watch what he says. What I wanted to do today is just break it down real simple so you can understand exactly what the debate is about. Okay. Come on, Homer. He's going to break it down. Now, you might think that you had a decent grasp on the concept of tax cuts and tax increases, but maybe not. Listen. What I've done here is we got a ruler and measured out the size of the tax cut is how big the circle is by your income, which is listed at the top, from low incomes up to people who make more than a million dollars a year. Okay. So what he's done here is he's taken out a little ruler, and I didn't take out a little ruler, but I think you get the idea. These are the things that George Bush did. These are the tax cuts. And so George Bush did this. If you made $10,000, you got a tax cut. I don't know how you got a tax cut, because if you're making $10,000, you don't pay taxes. So what George Bush did is he took some of the money that's almost like a progressive thing to do for a Republican. That's strange. He took some of the money here and he gave some of the redistribution of wealth. He gave money to people who didn't pay taxes. Okay. So these are the tax cuts that George Bush gave everybody. All right. Just so you understand that. And the people, the concept of people making over a million dollars, having a bigger circle than those making $10,000, they pay $100,000. These pay nothing. But you notice they have a circle. I mean, he's almost lost me here, but I think I'll, I may be able to keep up. Go ahead, Austin. Obama would preserve a couple thousand dollars a year tax cuts for virtually all Americans. And even for people who make a lot, they get to keep the tax cut on the first $250,000 of their income. Wow! Oh, wow! They're living pretty, aren't they? That's so generous. Austin, really, the concept to be able to keep your money that you've worked hard and earned and not have the government just come in and take it? Oh, my gosh. You have such a big heart. Doesn't he? Now, remember, he's, he's changed the conversation. Obama will preserve these tax cuts. That's really interesting. What is he saying? Obama's not going to take the money from you. Because remember, they're flipping this around. We're not talking about tax cuts. We're talking about tax increases. Don't look at these as what you're going to what you're going to get. That's what are they going to take? You already have this money. You've got it. He's going to preserve these tax cuts. So, in other words, 